Gala was somebody that Dali kind of held in such high regard and if she didn't exist and he didn't have this relationship with her the work that he created wouldn't be what it was and what it is. He actually signed this painting with Gala's name, Gala Salvador Dali. Hello, I'm Celeste and I'm here today to perform Not Your Muse at the Tate Modern. The painting that I'm performing in response to is Metamorphosis of Narcissus by Salvador Dali. The reason why I chose this painting, there's so much depth to it and I think he's referring to the narcissist who fell in love with their own reflection in some water and drowned. So I think that there's that to it, which is obviously like quite a ghastly story, but you can understand why an artist would be so intrigued. For the performance, we've taken inspiration from the painting in a number of different ways. This was actually made by a lady called Sarah McCormack. All of these different shapes that are so sort of like off kilter really took me into this sort of surrealist world. This mirrored floor is representing the the lake or the river that Narcissus kind of saw his reflection and fell in love with. The flower is actually one of the most important things because the daffodil is the flower of the narcissist and the flower in this Salvador Dali painting. And another way he refers to Gala in this piece of work is with a poem that accompanies the painting in which he says, Gala, my narcissist. I think on one hand it's very beautiful, the flower kind of like blooming out of this kind of horrible death and that is something that is very beautiful and blossom and bloom definitely suggests as well the evolution of a person. But then I think the uglier side of it, where we bring those two parallels together of the narcissist and Gala, it's perhaps Dali recognising that maybe that there is a role reversal in the muse and the artist relationship where actually he recognises he's actually the vessel for her own narcissism where she gets some sort of sense of empowerment in knowing that her ideas and it's actually her brain that's filtering into what into what he's doing and she's guiding him and steering him and perhaps even manipulating him at points for her own purpose and I think that he obviously can recognize the mechanics of that at points and you can sort of hear that and see that in his writing and in his work too um, but it's probably something he recognises he needs, you know. Not your muse. For me, what the word muse means is somebody, I guess, that ultimately, like, they're empowered in a sense, but then there's also a part of themselves which they're powerless and sort of helpless over because it's someone else's ideas that are being sort of implanted upon them. You've mistaken me for your masterpiece gilding me so I try. That was something where I really intentionally wanted to like create the imagery of being in a golden frame but also it have some meaning in the emotion of, of what I was saying not just sort of like creating an image and that line to me means there's this person that's trying to turn you to gold and they're putting in absolutely everything they can into you to make you this thing that they think that you are and it's not necessarily something that you see you possess or you have within yourself but you feel that this person recognizes it within you so you try to live up to what they are sort of putting out there for you and that's definitely been my experience it says to anybody attempts to sort of mould me or place their ideas upon me in a way that isn't truthful to me. It just says to them that it's not theirs to do that. But I'm not a, not a 